Hey, Slicers, it's the Fox. It's going to take more than an F4 or F5 tornado to take me out. <laughs> uh, I've seen that sucker coming, and the first thing I'd said was, so this is what the Slicers have been up to. Yeah, I, that that's a bad joke. Uh, so far, 40 confirmed dead down here. Thousands without homes. And... I'm not even around. I'm right now uh, over here in England working on a film on uh, Operation Chastity. You should look it up. It's uh, we got a YouTube channel. Uh, we've already got a couple of behind the scenes already pulled up. If you don't believe us? Look up OperationChastity.com. Uh, you'll end up pulling up our main site, but. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this short, and I'm sorry I haven't called in a long time. I've just been busy. So uh, this is Fox signing off for a while, and I no longer need the medication. I was never on any drugs, so Brian, Michael, sorry to disappoint you. Sam, eh, you're still on my top ten. Uh, Megan Fox can basically drop dead. After I've seen what happened with Mad TV's version, that that's what should have been put on the forums a long, long time ago. SliceofSciFi.com. Michael, I'm ending game. I am so on to you. Hey, Slicers. It's Mike from Michigan again. Hey, guys. This is Gary from Jacksonville. I'm calling in with a mini review. Hello, Skippy people. It is Jam from the Obscure 80s Podcast. Ding! Hello, Slice of Sci-Fi. This is Mary King from the Signal Podcast. A wild Snorlax appears with yet another contribution. Ring in and it's dead. Long live the Slice of Sci-Fi voicemail. Uh, and welcome to the Slice of Sci-Fi voicemail show. I am, uh, that made my brain hurt. I'm Michael Arman <laughs> Hey... <laughs> I I wow! That, I you just gave me brain damage by listening to that voicemail. I know. I wow. am, I am Brian Stone. <laughs> Imagine how I feel. <laughs> I should I should say I am happy not to be in the top ten. Yeah. No, you're in the top five. Wow. Can, can you hear this noise? I can hear this noise right now. <laughs> oh, oh, stop, oh, stop, dear God. stop. That's what dear I hear. God. You're I'm, in his top ten, Sam. I'm mortified. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move along. <laughs> and uh, uh yeah, I got I got Wait, I have to respectfully disagree. I but, think you still need the medication. Yeah. My thing is He didn't even mention you. Well that's uh, you're Tam. You're Tam, you're okay, not people. Guys, here, here let's let's, let's think. okay. A he's got a horrible sense of humor. Uh to talk about the Alabama tragedy like that. It was uh, horrible. yeah. Horrible. He's Just, not in Alabama. Two they let him out of the country. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. He's not in it's Alabama. It's a nefarious he's actually, plan. Yeah. In, in London. He's, in no, UK. Wait, wait, where he's, he's from. The they, UK, but, but, but here's what's going on. They let him out. They're never going to let him back in. <laughs> we <Yeah>. can hope. <laughs> Yeah. Now, wow. now maybe his cell is called the UK. I don't know. <laughs> that could be. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm a little scared. And that I'm voicemail. Very, maybe frightened. he's stuck in his grandma's base, basement playing Risk. And that's why he says he's in the UK. UK, yeah. You know, maybe that's why. He's damaging uh, my calm. That's for sure. <laughs> that was unnerving. <laughs> wow. Well, this is the voicemail show, if you, uh, b- b- believe it or not. And um, you can call the numbers 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735 if you would like to uh, please, contribute to this. Please. Um, something other than um, that. Da- something other than that. Please. Greeting Slicers. It's the Fox. Oh. Um, okay. Hold on. What? 211? No, I don't know. No, not that. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. funny. That's good. That's mm-hmm. funny. Not that fox, not that fox, not that fox, not that fox. <laughs> <laughs> Set the dogs on him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta hear that again.
again. I mean, really, seriously, play that again. That's so short. That was awesome. Go ahead, play it again. Not that fox. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> and it pays. Seven it seconds, pays seconds of funny well. right there. That is that brilliant. Awesome. brilliant. Oh, oh my god. Oh, okay, <sighs> just got to just got to wrap up. Okay. Jeez, well, that was interesting and somewhat unpleasant. Let's try this again. Hey, it's Fox, not Fat Fox, from over at www.heyfoxcomic.com. Um, what? Ah, okay. Anyway, long-time listener, first-time caller, all that jazz. I wanted to ask about context. Specifically, I wanted to address the complaint that some of these geek-targeted movies, like the Marvel Comics movies, risk limiting their audiences by relying too heavily on source materials. I watched Thor yesterday and totally dug it. A couple of the reviews that I've read, though, although mostly positive, lamented the surrounding Asgardian characters yeah. go mostly unexplained, leaving uh, them flat, unless one is familiar with the source comics. Yeah. I, I I thought to myself out loud amongst friends who had no such problem, and I don't think I've ever actually read a Thor comic. Maybe I thought I've simply absorbed enough Marvel mythos over the years that it's evened out, but my friend had the right of it. What exactly is the context? He and the Rainbow Bridge, Loki and the Warriors 3? Right, I may not have read any Thor comics, but I'm at least passingly familiar with Norse mythology. So what do y'all think? Is it smart to make a movie that requires some familiarity with source materials? How about if those source materials are the mythological context of an entire culture? Ooh, a minute or less! Yeah! Wow! That was impressive, sir. Holy and crap. all he did was do what you told him, Mike, which is keep it under a minute. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So that that works on many levels, and may I say that is quite a voicemail debut. Yes, yeah. I mean, Bravo. that's his first yeah, you got, time. You got to clap. You got to clap already. Oh, good lord. And man. the replay on the previous yeah, one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, good job. Um, I, I tell you, I think you've you 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 have set yourself in um, well in the annals of this show. <laughs> yeah. do, we, do we dare answer his question? Um, yes, it's very so. Yes, yes. <laughs> I agree. Hey, Flashers. I ran a title through Google Translate. Mm-hmm. And I okay. read it through four times, like you said. Yeah. I brought it back. It's not a movie, but what it turns out to be is feet and sci-fi. I'll give you about feet? two seconds more. Sci-fi. Slice, Slice sci-fi? of sci-fi. Yeah, oh, saying. Slice of sci-fi. Duh. Of course. There you go. That's pretty good. Feet and sci-fi. Feet? Well, I actually have some more here. Oh. Yeah. That uh, Mark actually stepped up to the plate and Mark, ran. Mark, Mark, Mark from Merck in Memphis. Merck in Memphis? Merck in Memphis. Okay. Memphis, Memphis. Okay. Yes, yeah, exactly. He <laughs> said, sent some in here, and I thought I'd throw these in throughout the show okay. here. So here is one. It has, uh, let's see, it has revised the term. Is the is the, It has uh, revised the term. It has revised the term. And it went from English to Chinese, traditional English, uh, Greek English. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and these are all sci-fi movies? Uh, these are all sci-fi movies. Says so it went from what to what to it what? Has it has on. revised the term. This one's tough. I did, <clears throat> I, I, I did not get this one when I was playing by myself. Term. 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 Has revised the term. Revised the Re- oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It revisited the term. <laughs> it has no, no, no. Revised. That's I was right the first time. Revised. Do you want term. me to read that? Perhaps, no, 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 perhaps no, 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 someone needs to get his <laughs> prescription. I, I, I don't right. think changing the words is going to make us any less. It's stumped. not going to make any difference. Uh, the answer is altered states. Altered states. Uh, I love altered that movie. States. Yeah. Altered states. Okay. Okay. There, there you go. Okay. Ooh, alrighty. Hey, Slicers, this is Steve from Melbourne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I was wondering if anybody saw the. Uh, Game of Thrones reference in Chuck in the episode Chuck versus the Volkovs. Thought I'd pass it on. Thanks. I have not. I uh, have to confess. I yeah, have no idea. he was reading the book actually, if I remember correctly. Oh, was he? I think Chuck was reading the book. Hmm. George R. R. Martin book. Yeah, yeah. I think he was. Re- I, I think he was reading. Uh, I'm tr- trying to remember. I think he was. I think, I think he was, you're right. Yeah, he was reading the first book, Game of Thrones. Oh, so very nice. Hi, Slicers. Long to here. It's been a few since I've called it's in. Been a I've long while. Just been sitting back and enjoying all the memes going on. Oh, mm-hmm. good. But I just learned that the great sci-fi cartoon Symbionic Titan has been canceled. From what I heard, the ratings were fine, but Cartoon Network had no viable marketing for toys and stuff. <laughs> that just pisses me off. <laughs> I have a soft spot in my wow. heart for a lot of the 80s cartoons, but I know that the writing was largely horrible. Now we've got some well-written sci-fi cartoons, and they get canceled despite good ratings? Yes. Seems like we just can't win. Mm. At least the Clone Wars is still going strong. True. Keep on slicing, folks. You know, is it bad that I thought he said uh, they aren't murkining them? 
properly. Mm. They have no marketing on mm. cartoons. That's yeah, really bad yeah. of me. It's yeah, really bad. Hopefully really some bad of our of listeners are Glee watchers because there was a little Merkin love in this week's episode. There was. Just, just mm. saying. That's funny. What do you got, Mike? All righty, one more here. Um, this one, uh, we'll give you a little easier one. Realm Counter Attack. Realm Counter Attack. The Empire Strikes Back. Empire yeah. Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Okay. Nice. Ding, ding, ding. Woo! Uh, greetings, uh, Slice of Sci-Fi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am calling to get in touch with uh, Mr. Dillo of Berlin okay. and his associate. Uh, Mr. Sweet Leaf. I think it's Theonius. Uh, I'm Leaf. representing a marketing firm, and we are currently working on the product Truvia. Truvia. Which is an alternative <laughs> sweetener, sweetener. <laughs> uh, made from the leaves of the uh, stevia plant. Yeah. Uh, it's actually stevia, leaf, but okay. You might say. And <clears throat> by dint of his name, uh, with thought that uh, Mr. Sweetleaf might make the perfect spokesperson uh, folks very, uh, for maybe. this product. No, well, I tell you what. Actually, actually, uh, Sweetleaf actually has his own email mm-hmm. address, um, and you can email him. The The email that they gave last week is actually real, and it, yeah. does, it does exist. So we, we've been actually chatting. It's, uh, yeah. And as a point of uh, fact, Mike, it is both Stevia and Stevia both pronounced either way. Uh, we, yeah, okay. I won't get into that debate, but uh, <laughs> evidently uh, it is actually Well, shady. that's because you hear it from one source. No, I heard it from the source. <laughs> Who's that? The one that actually created it. Oh, yeah. That's what they all say. Yes. You know the guy. <laughs> what, Sweetly created it? Really? No, yeah. Wow. Sweetly did. Yeah. Dude. Dude, absolutely. he's got a full-on lab up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. He's not not just mad mixing skills. Yeah. I'll tell you what. He's a biochemist, too. <laughs> Hi. Um, Big BS and PA. So... Han Solo shoots the communications board in the detention block of the Death Star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. The a- agent in Paul shoots the radio, and they both say the same line. Yeah. Lousy yes. conversation. Lousy conversation, yes. yes. I was just flipping through the channels, and I came upon Navy SEALs, I couldn't believe it. They said Crazy the Charlie did the same yeah. line after Seriously? shooting the yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. And the line I mean, was. Boring conversation. Oh my God, we blew him up. <laughs> wow, we blew up the big BS. Wow. wow. Yep. Hey guys, big BS and PA here. I just wanted to let you know I really appreciate you putting the video up oh. on uh, uh, on an RSS feed because. Mm-hmm. I don't have regular internet access, especially on Thursdays, which means that I can't really catch you live. No. But I do appreciate catching you on the video. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Not a problem. That's Glad you what like it's it. there for. Yeah. Wow, yeah, more absolutely. pressure on me to not to screw this up. Don't mess it up, oh, Philip oh, We know you will anyways. And it's that's just, that's why we created SliceOfSciFi.tv. Right. So SliceOfSciFi.tv, you can go there and check out all the shows and... We're going to have um, we're, we're, a lot of changes. There's actually going to be, it's not just a once a week thing. So. No, no. The cheese is moving slightly to the left. That's right. Slightly? Yes. Slightly. And, and, and you may think it's just a processed cheese log, but actually what it is, is more compact. It's not smaller. It's just more nutrition packed into it. That's right. And more flavor, obviously. Yes. Much more flavor. Mm. I'm hungry now. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi, guys. Big BS and PA here. I was just wondering if you realized that Captain Kirk is the stepbrother of Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. Uh I mean, his dad met their mom in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. Now, how was that for crossing the street? (laughs) Damn. Oh, dude. I I just caught that. I don't get it. Four. Thor. Thor. George Kirk in Star Trek, Trek. the movie, was oh. Chris Hemsworth. Yes. And Natalie Portman plays Queen Amidala in Star oh. Wars. And that was just wrong of you to do, sir. Wow. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> wow. Wow. You just nerd cred went up higher, by the way. Congratulations. Mine or his. Mine or his. Both. Yours. Both. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Slices. Steve from Melbourne here. 
Now, is it just me, or is there some sort of Australian invasion happening? Um, mm -hmm. Just have a look at the small Here. screen. You've got Chuck, Barkama, Spartacus, True Blood, and our favourite Fringe, full of Aussie actors. Oh, yeah. and that's just the small screen. And have a look at the voicemail show. Um, yeah, I know. Just seems to be an increase in the number of Aussie callers. Now, I don't know what's going on. If I hear anything, you'll be the first to know. But for now, just watch your back and uh, be careful of that Brian Brown character. Yeah. He just slips a little too comfortably into the Australian accent. Ah. In infiltrator, huh? Ah. I know nothing of what you speak. <laughs> okay, folks. I know nothing. It's all right. <laughs> We're safe. We are protected by Vegemite. Oh. Now Ooh. I'm hungry for Vegemite. Ooh. I know. Damn it. Oh. On that bread you have now. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Thanks, Meningate. Mm. Damn, was it show over yet? Oh, I like Vegemite. Hey there, Slicer. It's Justin from Kentucky here, giving you a call in response to some of your Doctor Who comments. In particular, mm. uh, the ones where you said that season six would be a good jumping on point. Um, I think that that is incorrect. Season five, I totally agree with you. That's a good jumping on point because it's mm. fresh and it's a reboot. Okay. Well, um, mm. Almost a reboot. Uh, but season six, they're bringing up themes and ideas that were planted in season five. Uh, um, and point, actually, yes. for some, you might want to um, go back to even season four. Yeah, the problem is, is if you go back, you can go back and go back and right, go back and go back. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it, but, it, there's got to be a point where you just have to cut it loose and but say... It, but at least five was with the current doctor, right, that they right. have right now, yeah. the, the young-looking one, right, well, Matt Smith? Know, well, yeah, they had, you know, you can. I think personally, I think uh, when you go back with uh, Rose and uh, Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor, I think that's a really good. Right there is a really good start. So I, I saw um, Christopher Eccleston and I saw some David Tennant, mm -hmm. and I like, that's I like it. And then I, I kind of, I, I left off sort of in the middle <laughs> yeah. of the David Tennant run, and so I don't know how much I've missed along the way. But a, a fair amount of bits here and there, and of course, you miss the the Torchwood spinoffs as well in all of this. So that's another reason to go back to the Christopher Eccleston stuff. Yeah. It's because yes. of Torchwood, because yes. it really introduces Captain Jack. Yeah, yes. and all of that. And so I think that's why it's really good if you're gonna for the newer viewers. I mean, maybe that's the best place. Personally, like I say, go all the way back oh, as far as you can. You know, yeah. Tom, Tom Baker is a favorite starting point for a lot of people. It, I know. It is. It can be overwhelming. But it's, it's, yes. it is. And it's a little too campy and cheesy. I think really the, this new incarnation of Eccleson is really the place to start. So. Okay. Okay. Hey there, Slicers. It's Justin from Kentucky here uh, calling in with a note about the Fringe finale. Um, I would really like Crazy. to thank Fox for actually point or picking this up for a fourth season yes because if they hadn't and the show had ended i know you'd be like <laughs> where the finale ended the range it would be inconsolable yes. absolutely yeah. god was that good yes it was <laughs> <laughs> That's how you really feel, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was. It, it, it's, it is absolutely some of the most spectacular TV I think I've ever seen on TV. Yeah, it, it but really I is. I didn't think of it until he said it just now. If that had been the end, oh, I would have. Ex it, oh, inconsolable is a perfect word, Justin. Pitchforks, burning torches. The mm -hmm. works, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I would have driven Indeed. to Hollywood. That, that that was worth a road trip to Hollywood. Yeah. just to yeah. throw stones, just at, to throw yeah. things at eggs, absolutely. fire bombs, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Sort of All of them. I'd have rioted. Yep. Totally. Yeah, I'm a one man riot. <laughs> right, right, Michael right. Orman again. <laughs> one me. man riot. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> 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 Mike, I think you got a new business card. That's awesome. Mike Warman again, One Man Riot. There you go. That's, that's perfect. That's so a video bit. I know it is. <laughs> it is. It really is. We got we to produce that. There we go. Hi, this is Nancy from Des Moines. Something horrible has got to happen. Wow. They have Gorn and Eames back on criminal intent, and mm -hmm. they've had SG-1 most of the week on SIFI. I know the world is going to end or something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> Help us, please. I'm, real, I'm really personally real happy that they're back on CI, but that's just me because I love that show. But I love I love those two characters. I know you don't. Who? Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio oh, and Catherine Ruby. I know. So, I like her. She was on um, Oz and she was uh, fantastic. She's fantastic, but I mean, but kind he of, bugs me. I, I think he's awesome and I always loved Law and Order CI, but that's just me. Yes, folks, I am a closet Law and Order fan. Mm. I even loved Law are and Order UK. Are you saying you're coming out of the closet? Well, Jimmy Bamber was on uh, that. Yes, it was good. You know, okay. you know, I'll, I'll finally admit it. Kind of like you and your uh, penchant for 
um, homoerotic dance tunes from the 80s. Wow. He's There's not in the closet about that. I, I'm just really? saying. I'm He's just saying. saying. <laughs> or Erasure or Depeche Mode. Or uh, you have, you have a penchant for it and... Uh, I think the the th- the threat was that if she hears your your Pandora radio of Erasure one more time, that you were going to get the bat. Just saying. <laughs> First thing in the morning, it's yeah, a little okay. jarring. Well, l- l- let's, <laughs> let's, try, let's try one more of these <laughs> please, here. Yes, please. please. Um, improbable woman by the contraction. Bionic woman. No. Improbable woman. Improbable woman by the contraction. Uh, contraction. Huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the incredible shrinking woman. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. Hey, slices. Danny the blind geek from Australia again. Um, I just thought I'd mention how I've lately been lying back in a van, sipping the Kool Aid, whilst the walls of my garden get higher and higher and higher until I can no longer see the real world, but just the sun shining out of Steve Jobs' ass. Yes, <laughs> I've gone Apple. Okay. I don't really like saying I'm a fanboy, because I'm not, but I've got an iPhone, a MacBook Pro, and just got an Apple TV, and basically because I'm blind, voiceover talks, they talk. Yeah, it's true. Now all of a sudden I can actually catch up on things I never had time for. Awesome. Six-hour commute to and from work. I get to watch all the shows I wanted to see, like Torchwood, Fringe, even the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I never finished. So, Steve, you're a pig. I don't like you at all. <laughs> but your products, I love them. Yes. Bye. Pretty much. Wow. <laughs> Six-hour commute? I, really? I, it boggles the mind. I, I, get, uh, what? A six-hour commute? That's that can be one, right. uh, three way, three in and three out. Wow. Okay. But still, man, that's like going from Tucson to Flagstaff. Hey, Australia is a large place, Brett. Damn. Just saying. Woo. Okay. Hi, guys. This is Dawson from Des Moines. I have a, a question for you. What would happen if the Borg assimilated the, the Death Star? <gasps> that's, that's been no speculated. Moon? That's a Borg sphere. Mm-hmm. Have a nice day, guys. Yeah, Bye. it's been speculated once before. We uh, kind of... Yeah. Go back through some of our past episodes. I mean, really far back, actually. That's quite a ways. Yeah, back. I don't remember that one. And so it, it was before my time. Jumped a show, actually. Yeah, mm. and it went to a, another show I that think. shall not be named. Yeah. But yeah. Was I, there an end result? Yes, there was. Actually, it was. Uh, it was the, the, the famous the, geek slap fight. I mean, really. It was, was really the <laughs> smi- yeah. the sci fi smackdown and the starship smackdown. Yeah, we which did. Which actually didn't go in. Wow. Now, now, be we nice. Tried. Be we, nice. We be tried. Nice. You're gonna hurt Trampus's feelings. I, I, it's not Trampus's fault. It's just, That's true. It's not his fault. True. It's not your fault, Trampus. Just know that. That's right. Hey, yeah, I was up on the uh, website and saw your poll for the week uh, of whether um, the kid in Doctor Who is Amy's daughter or a young River. You get an extra option on there that River's daughter, or, uh, Amy's daughter, is River. So mm. take that on there and see how many you get on your poll. Right? Mm-hmm. River Tam? Interesting. No, no. Oh, it's, yeah. um, yeah, don't worry about it. It's good, Yeah, though. yeah, just just, just, just smile yeah. and nod and, and look pretty over there. That's, yeah, what, that's your job. I, 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 you had me until uh, Exactly. Pretty. Now, now, folks, if you ever have something like that, you can always email Michael Hickerson. That's mm-hmm. Hick- Hickerson at Slice of Sci-Fi and tell him that, and he'd be probably glad to yeah. tinker. Or Summer also as well, and they'll be glad to tinker with the polls too. So Because that's mm. not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh-oh, he's what? got another one. He's got another one. I got he's another one, and this one, this one is pretty weak, so I thought I'd go through it really quick here. It's uh, Eyewitness. 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 Um, I Spy? Mm, no. no. Looker. Oh, Looker. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Is that a that, movie? Yeah, it's a movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah no is. idea. That was it, weak. It, yeah, it was kind of weak just because it wasn't really... Well, it's just one word. Up. It's hard to... Meh. Yeah, that's tough. Meh. Danny the Blind Geek here again. 11.3 voicemails, Michael. 11.3 that I sent last week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Point three? Did they get through? Well, Point three. one does, but we'll talk about that soon. <laughs> but 10.3. Me talking about Star Trek collections. Mm-hmm. About my... Star Wars underwear, yep. about the wow. skin and hair samples from different actors from Supernatural. I'll oh, never be the same. But no, none of that gets through. <laughs> I get boiled down to one token little sound. So if I want my voicemails to be played on air, I know what I have to do now. Mm-hmm. Sort of dull, sort of naikarumba, sort of shazam. No, it's a 
<laughs> That's disturbing, that actually. Was disturbing. It, it was very disturbing. Although I uh, disturbing to, on lots of levels, actually. I have to say, when you said the skin and hair samples right after the underwear, I was going so much. Oh. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> wow. Hey, this is Gail in Northern California. And on that little meme about movies that were totally saved by one person in one role, my favorite one to tout is Tombstone with Val Kilmer as Dr. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everything oh, yeah. else about that one. movie was crap, but he was bad. Really? No, I thought the brisket was pretty good. And then on the good. Game of Thrones things, I asked the question to see if I should watch it, even though I'm not big on the world, and I started watching it, and I caught the first three, and I hate you guys! I, know. <laughs> wow, I really don't Peter. need to be addicted to anything. No. Sure okay. you do. Go ahead. Yeah, it's good I stuff. disagree. I thought uh, you know Tombstone had quite a bunch of good actors in it. I did too. I did. Yes, but re- he really was the best oh, he, part of he that. He was I mean, totally yeah. outstanding. Yes, I, but I will still sit there and say uh, uh, Michael Bean was a very he good did. Johnny Ringo very too. Yes. Yes. So Johnny I'll Ringo. say it's more the equivalent of say a Pirates of the Caribbean where um, Johnny Depp sort of took it over because mm-hmm. he was so good. The same thing with Val Kilmer in that movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. would, I would agree. Okay. Hello, cast and listeners of the Slice of Science. Sorry, voicemail show. I'm calling in to make a small correction to the mistake others have made. It is higher volume rates that not scratch their seven ears at the same time. It occurs almost daily. But it is in fact the annual Pond Flower Festival. It is held every year. But the people who attend prefer to call it the Vulcan Sex Toy Expo. <laughs> That's before I buy all my stimulating items. <laughs> One of your listeners, one man from Cape Cod, is even a vendor. <laughs> he has been selling phase merchants to mail Vulcans so they can fulfill their darker desires, pretending to be their mirror burst zone. <laughs> it has been a very popular <laughs> item. One man told me to let you all know if you ever make it to the festival. I mean expo. Stop by his booth and he'll give a free set of vibrating Vulcan ears to whoever mentions the slice of sci-fi podcast. I love the show. Please keep it up. Oh, I want the ears. I just want the ears. <laughs> that is so wrong on <laughs> so many levels. That yeah. is just wow. Oh, I just wish it was clearer. Oh, yeah, I know. Right? Oh. Like, oh, wow. That is that would live in infamy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Wow. Hey slicers, it's Edmund from Greenville. On the subject of DVDs versus streaming. Recently, at the urging of some of my compadres over at Critical Myth, I used Netflix streaming to finally fall down the hatch and start a Lost Mm. Marathon. Be quiet, Brian. It's a wonderful series for those of us who actually pushed through the sophomore season slump. Mm. Especially for a series like Lost, which is so given to cliffhangers, the instant availability made for a wonderful viewing experience. Yes. Yes. In fact, it seemed quite appropriate for Lost, as I found myself in a very pleasurable Skinner box, (laughs) except one in which I had to push the button every 43 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what it was. Now, see, the the thing is, is you got to remember, when I originally watched Lost, it was on TV, folks. Yes. I haven't, I wasn't about to shell out the money for the DVDs, because that's insanely priced, Mm -hmm. you know, but now that it's on instant, Mm -hmm. it's very easy and very accessible. So. Yes, mm-hmm. or yeah. or Sam could loan it to you, Brian, because some magical person got me the fabulous box set for Christmas. No idea who she's talking about. Uh, I yeah. would love to hear your reaction to the finale. Yeah, I would love, I would love to hear it. Mm. Well, when I have the copious amounts of spare time. Oh, see, because I'm reading books, Brett. And so <laughs> speaking of, you know how George R. R. Martin books. said the ending of Lost sucked. Yeah. Damon Lindelhoff tweeted this week that he finally uh, read Game of Thrones and got to the ending, and he thought it was fabulous. It was like a really funny, sarcastic, good-natured oh. tweet. Like, wow, good for him. Okay, I th- oh. it was funny. All right, then. <laughs> he's funny. Hi, gang, it's Kevin Batchelder. I wanted to chime in talking a little bit about SGU and its recent cancellation. Mm. I, I loved Bash Sci Fi as much as the next fan, but I don't think we can on this cancellation for them. Um, uh. 
That first half of that first really? season, like Sam kind of mentioned in the last regular show, really I didn't think was that good either. Yeah. Nothing really there to grab me. It took a looked while. way too much yeah. like a BSG version 2.0 uh, and all these cool time travel mm. stories and other stuff didn't happen until much later in season two. So the showrunners uh, really missed their much. chance because the ratings ended up so low on this thing and with yeah. the cost. Sci-fi just couldn't financially do it. Hey, I'd love to blame them, but here they just uh, they didn't draw in folks quick enough. Uh, it's just Some too bad you it are, worked Kevin. out that way. But yeah, well, I'm afraid we'll have to move on to something else to blame sci-fi. I'm with Kevin. Well, well, now that you read that other on, article. Well, it, it really explains on. it, right? Um, okay, Brett, I'm uh, holding on. I, I will say he's right in the first half of the first season was bleh. Yeah. But, I mean, so was, by all your guys' admission, so was Fringe. And Absolutely. so was Chuck. And so, so was Chuck. Although I love Chuck from the but beginning. But so of it's me. different. I mean, you know, um, A, sci-fi can't afford as much as like a main channel, I'm guessing. But also, it's different uh, formula depending on your actors and what's going on i mean you don't know how much it costs versus ratings what's it's different for every show right. what's profitable for it to continue okay but that's that's not the point where i think he was trying to make he sat there and said the show was meh you know and it didn't drag him in and it yeah, never, and but he was also saying it just heresy. didn't get it didn't get the ratings exactly well yeah. and it, it didn't did, get the and ratings it and he right said it was it, he didn't say it didn't drag him in he said he watched it and he ended up loving it right he just but he said part of the problem was, was people fell off season? early yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and um if people want to go to gate world to get an explanation from sci-fi's uh craig engler about um the whole what happened with the ratings of sgu and why they moved it around and it's interesting it's I'll a good re- different I respect, perspective I respect them for the, at least doing that yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah but yeah, I also, yes, I also, yes. I also believe that you know, come on, if he's owned by NBC Universal, who has a lot of money, I mean, mm-hmm. it just wasn't. It doesn't it, work that way, though. I know it, it can if they really, really want it. To. It and can obviously if they, they to. do, but yeah, but exactly. why would they want to? Exactly. Is the thing. Right. Like, I, that's the thing. And really, this this show just is so. Damn, I good. still blame it him. I don't need, care. It needs to go someplace else. Okay. It needs to go someplace that can support him. Then, if right. that's the case, they shouldn't have undertook it. And uh, because so I'd interestingly seen enough, that- when they first ordered it, they ordered it for two seasons at once, which is rare yeah. because they had so much faith in the concept and in the SGU mm-hmm. fan base. Name, yeah. It mm-hmm. debuted at low numbers and just kept getting lower no matter what they did. Just wow. had a pissed off fan base. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah and I, But we've talked about that, and I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago the fact that it took place in that universe, and there was a lot of people who just weren't had happy expectations with that. that weren't met. Yeah, right. I know people like me who hadn't loved it because they had no idea what they were getting into. Mm-hmm. Back with it. Hey everyone, it's Kevin Batchelder. I wanted to give uh, Brian a thank you for mentioning the series of podcasts I do about the Sci-Fi Channel's original, You're the man. Uh, you know, Saturday Night Movies. You're insane. I grew up a big, big fan of <laughs> yes. those uh, creature oh, double shit. features that used to air <laughs> in my area. You know, on the UHF <laughs> channels, uh, Godzilla versus Mothra, Wolfman versus some other crazy thing. So mm. these things very much harken back to that and let me have a lot of fun. But I do take a lot of uh, crap on Twitter and Facebook when oh, I start putting up posts about these yeah. folks. Yeah, uh, as was mentioned in the last podcast folks complaining that hey you know we shouldn't be encouraging sci-fi to do this <laughs> yeah. you know when we're losing good shows like sgu hey i love bsg sgu just as much as the next person but uh, sure. you know having some fun with my sci-fi is still important to me too and that's mm-hmm. what this stuff yeah. really yeah. is and mm-hmm. you know that. they only license these things it's not like they're making uh, great grandiose uh, budgets true. with them yeah heck we even had one of the writers for uh, Stonehenge Apocalypse joined us for the discussion about that one last year. <laughs> awesome. uh, and he realized he was not writing the next Citizen oh, Kane. Sure. So, <laughs> hey, you know, if you step back and see what it is, it's Making a lot money. of fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, fairly please. short money, and they do really well yep. on the ratings. So, yeah. And it's yeah. still at least a lot better than wrestling. So we should be happy with Word, that. Word. Yeah. I absolutely care. agree with that. And we've had several of them on here as well. Yep, they're, they're, sure they're, they've, they've, we've interviewed many of them. That have, There's a fan base for it. Absolutely. It's not my cup of tea, but I get why people like it. Oh, I, I, every, every now and then, it's kind of fun to dive yeah. down that rabbit hole. I can't hole make just, myself. Yeah. I've tried. Just to, you have to be in the mood. Yeah, you have to be really drunk <laughs> or hangover drunk and recovering the next day. I've got a friend of mine in Texas who just loves those things, adores them, and oh. I'm like, really? Yeah, I, mean, I don't it, love them, but I can find oh, a place no, I mean, for them. Well, point them to Kevin's podcast. Oh, there, there, you there you go. There you go. All right, Mike, you got another one? Next one. Runner of Pieces. Blade Runner. There you go. Yeah. That was easy. That was well, easy okay, that was one. too easy. Let's yeah. do another one here. Oh, this is another easy one. I return the thing of the marsh. Oh, I know. Swamp Return thing. of Swamp Thing? Return, yeah, Return of yeah. Swamp Thing. thing yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay, um, let's see if we can get somewhere. Get a stump of me? Uh, uh, Lightning of Spirit. This one's a good one. Lightning of Spirit. Uh, Lightning of... The Flash? Mm-hmm. No, I thought Flash Gordon is what I thought. Uh, Lightning, Lightning of Spirit. Spirit. Um, uh, something with ghosts. 
Nope, nope. Um, uh, 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 Ruska Doji. No, no, no. My neighbor Totoro. Uh, okay. <laughs> Brainstorm. Oh. oh. That one was good. That's a, that was good, a good one. one. That was a good one. Wow. All right, I'll get on that one. Hey, Slices. Steve from Melbourne here. And I have to go on record saying Matt Smith rocks as the Doctor. He's pretty good, actually. Stephen Moffat is my Time Lord. Oh, I don't know if I go that far, but yeah, I, I love Matt Smith. As I love it. He's really he's good. Really I, he brought good. you know, and it's so funny because so many people when David Tennant loved, no, yeah. like I'm not gonna like the new Doctor. We said the same thing when Eccleston left. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody, does. everybody does. Everybody does. But, Every Doctor is like, no, but you come tradition. But you come around eventually. Oh yes, you do. They do a really good job of picking doctors that just grab you immediately and mm-hmm. go, who Each was that other guy? Who was that other guy? We Say don't his know. name. Yeah. Say his name. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What does the doctor look like? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Slicers. This is Michael in Cartersville. There seems to be a lot of confusion lately about Ponfar. <laughs> is it for oh, one Vulcan? Is it for two Vulcans? Is it for the entire planet? Wow, we need a... Is it once wow. a year? Pond for is it once every seven years? Is it seven times a year? Well, actually, if you go back to season two, episode one, Amok Time, oh. Spock tells us very clearly what happens. Apparently, Spock and Pring had a little get-together at age seven where they had a little mini mind meld. Spock says it's less than a marriage but more than a betrothal, but they are joined at that time so that when all the juices get flowing after puberty, they are drawn back to the planet Vulcan Wait. for Kunit Takali Fi, okay. marriage or challenge. Oh, yeah. mm. So. It would be really difficult if the whole planet was having Pon right. Far at one time. That would be awesome. Because then who would perform the ceremonies? <laughs> like crazy. So, there you go. There's an explanation Maybe of Pon that's Far. That's good, though. That makes Love the sense. Love show. Bye. Okay. It does. That makes sense. You can sync up Pon Far with, uh, by, uh, via Mind Melt. So, basically, they're playing Vulcan Spin the Bottle? That's it. I think so. I mean, really, Although, seriously, is what it sounded like. If the whole planet did go into Pon Far at the same time, it would kind of like join together with Highlander because there could be only one. Oh. That was reaching. Or, I, no, or, think about. Or no, maybe they, they, no. it's, uh, Or maybe but, it was more no, like pond. No. seven minutes in pond for heaven. I, I, I something like that. No. I'm <laughs> just trying to get <laughs> but, post be, office. If that was, if that actually mm-hmm. happened, if they all synced up and pond far happened globally every seven Chaos. years, right. it would be like the most. That would be, be like, like the party planet. It'd be spring oh, break. Right. It's 1999. Everybody, uh, Everybody be so there. They have to blockade the planet Vulcan. and stop people from trying to vacation Same. there when it Spring happens, Break right? Vulcan. To keep all the I'm college saying. students out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there'd be Klingons there with freaking lobsters on their heads. And, Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, it would be just chaos. Rami and the ale bongs. The universe would shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Rami and ale bongs, definitely. I could totally do one of those. You know, they, you, you see the PS, you know, the public service announcements for it, too. It says, you know, friends will let friends pawn far. <laughs> exactly. That exactly. Would Absolutely. That would be that it. Would be it'd, be awesome. be like, it'd be like the attraction i mean that mm-hmm. would be the happening it's fort place. lauderdale it totally is in spring wow. Prairie. and that's why the neutral zone you know we had to keep the, the romulans <laughs> the romulans screwed up oh, they were at the pond far party and it. absolutely it just, does make you one about the they black got hole black, the planet. they got they got yeah. banned from pond far forever because the last time they were there they broke the bottles and didn't that room, pay the, the room service absolutely bills they just they trashed the hotels so the charlie Co- sheen showed up so the kobayashi really maru really is really like hey dude Dude, our van broke down. That's Come it. get us. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Were they hot boxing in the rooms? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what were they doing? Absolutely. Hey, Slicers. This is Frank the Geek again. Last week when I called in about Red versus Blue, I was searching on Google for Brian Brown, and yeah. this is what I found, oh my which God. crashed my phone, my computer, oh, my virus. TV, and kind of cut off the lights and kind of scared me a bit. Sweet. Brian, oh, oh, Brian, downloading, oh, yeah, come on, stick that USB and harder and faster, oh, yeah, Brian, come on, Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah, <it's> so <laughs> that's <long>. disturbing. <laughs> wow. So some of my <laughs> home videos, some some of my home videos must have got online wow. somehow. <laughs> I want to throw up. I don't want to know exactly. I think I did a little bit in my well, mouth. You know, oh. it happens. Cyber sex, damn. Stop talking. Good day, Slices. Steve from Melbourne here. Now, I was watching SGU the other day, and there was a scene between Young and Camille. Uh, She was feeling kind of tired, so he offered his seat to her. She was a bit reluctant to take it. Um, Because it was a captain's chair. What? This ain't Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
clever, now, huh? I'm wondering, mm-hmm. was he offering more than a seat? <laughs> you be the judge. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That was kind of cute. Yeah. I, I thought that was a clever bit. It I was. Yeah. It was. It was yep. really nice. Agreed. Hey, guys. It's Joe in Connecticut. I just finished watching the series finale of SGU mm-hmm. and am now done with the sci-fi channel. Mm-hmm. I have to say, though, Granted, it's a cliffhanger. Kind of. But mm. could they have come up with a more appropriate way of ending no. it? Yeah. No. no, it was perfect. I don't yeah. think so. Seeing everything shut down mm-hmm. and Eli just standing there. Oops, spoiler. Spoiler. Looking at what, Sorry. What's to come? I Ho- think that hopefully was a everybody saw that. <laughs> brilliant. Well, since ending. we spoiled it, we might as well talk about it. Absolutely. So, so, okay. what, so what I loved is that that they put the the, the tertiary characters in the pods first, yes. and then the secondaries, and then you're left with the mains, and they kind of just whittle those down bit by yeah. bit yep. until you're left with the kid who kind of started it all. Yep. You who, know, think about it. But who is also really our window into the show, right? right. He mm-hmm. was kind of like... The everyman. Yeah, he yeah. was kind of like Hurley on Lost. You know, his reactions were what our reactions would be if that happened to us. You know what I mean? And so it was... Well, really what well makes done. me seriously sad is I see the potential of where they were going to take this. Could have gone anywhere. anywhere. Because at yeah. that point, it was all about Eli. And, mm-hmm. and and what Eli experiences, I want the next episode. I want this episode. I want to see what happens with Eli yeah. and why, why he... Because there was something else going on there. There was a reason that he stepped up to this. He finally manned up, and he finally said, "I'm smarter than everyone." Yeah, I think I, mean, I, I think it's that, something else. I think it's something else. Actually, I don't think so. I think he just I finally... do because I think what he's going to end up doing is inserting his consciousness into the computer so he that he yeah. can be with Jin. Yeah. With Jin, yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. That could be. I mean, that could be a possible outcome of it. That if mm-hmm. he could never do it, yeah, and I then would've... he could wake him up then because he'd be part of the system. So. Exactly. Exactly, but that's, we don't know. But she also don't know how much power it would have drawn for him to do that. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So, we'll never that, know. We'll never know. Oh, well. It was just how you end it, guys. It's perfect. It was a good one. It needs to be somewhere. Else. Yeah. Oh, oh, make a Lord. TV movie. Or just something. Yeah, more, Micah Hankey. He's more, crying please. again. There's no crying in radio broadcasts. <clears throat> hey, Slicers. It's Patrick in Portland. Uh, you know. Sam, I originally was just going to call up and argue with you because yeah. uh, we do last week time. you talked about the idea that you keep trying out shows on sci-fi, trying to find the diamond in the rough or, you know, hoping to strike gold. And at first I'm like, what are you, crazy? I was going to think maybe you'd swap places with Brian or something like that. Yeah. But basically, you know, I, I really thought about it, and you're right. You know, I guess the same reason to keep trying to watch things is the same reason why I want people to give Game of Thrones a chance. Yeah. Because... Yeah, it might take a couple episodes to get into, but in this case, I'm positive the payoff is going to be there. Well, and the thing, funny thing is, I love how I'm compared to the guy who's constantly throwing stuff aside. I stick with things pretty long, yeah, guys. Yeah, you do. I yeah. really do. You really do. You're, I, you're, you're better than a lot of us on that. Yes, Usually I am. Yes. So I, mean, I, um, I found myself quick to judge, but that doesn't stop me. If, I, if I'm turned off yeah. on something, it doesn't stop me from trying the next thing, right? Mm-hmm, like, I'm going right. to watch Alphas on sci-fi. Well, I think I am, too. I yeah. think it looks interesting. I mean, it's... Which one? Alphas. Alphas. It's the, it, it does oh, look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. The poor man's heroes. Yeah. yeah. You know. But I, I, guys, I stick with that. I mean, I'm stuck with Camelot all this time. Mike mm. and I both. I, I'm still with Camelot. I but still I'm am too. I'm to still recording it. it but just, and so wow. I, I, I can't put my finger on why I'll stick with something because I stuck with Fringe much longer than I stuck with No Ordinary Family or The Cape. I don't know what yeah. it is. I like, stuck all the way through Cape. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And, I, and I just. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, I quit that those quick. And so I don't know why one thing versus the other. I'm not really sure. I mean, it, yeah, Cape was Cape had had moments of really good. Yeah, it, it trips some of my triggers that I like. Actually, I'm doing the, the same thing with uh, Camelot now that I did with Cape, and that was basically fast forwarding through the storylines I didn't you're care like, about. You're like, you're like, that's Arthur, what I do with my soaps. soap operas. Sorry, yeah. Soap. yeah, it takes me like 15 like this, minutes to watch one like episode. This story, okay, I don't like the storyline. I don't mm-hmm. like this, and, and now I'm down to just watching Merlin. That's yeah. the only storyline I care about in there, and it's like fast forward, fast forward. Oh. Okay, this is interesting. No, ooh, boops, stop. No, there aren't any. I know, anymore. but I mean that's, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. They all stopped. That, yeah, all that's gone. 
So yeah, but I mean, uh, the funny thing is, we always look for the diamonds in the rough. We're always going to probably watch the new batches of shows. Well, a lot I mean, of people say they won't. You know, they get burned by Firefly. Was it for them or yeah. SGU or something? Yeah, you know, and, and I under I understand the initial gut reaction, but I'm sort of just in general an internal optimist. So I'm always thinking there's going to be. I don't want to miss the next good thing. Plus, we want True. our fix. True. Yeah. 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 Really. Hmm. Hey, Slicer, Patrick in Portland. Uh, hey, Tim, you know, a couple of voicemails back, you're asking why nobody thought you were the Messiah, and I, I think you got it wrong. You are the Messiah. However, it's for the other side. So, unfortunately, that means, yes, you are the Antichrist. Oh, wow. wow. And uh, we should maybe get Tim's opinion about that, don't I you think? I think so, Tim? yep. Mm. Oh, really? Oh really? Wow. really? I wouldn't have gone there, but okay. Yeah. He's you, evil, sir. folks. It works for you. You are my God. <sighs> Ew. Hey, Slicers, it's Patrick in Portland again. I won't promise this will be my last one. <laughs> anyway, right. um, you guys were talking last week about how music and how sound editing does make the show. Yes. And I couldn't agree more, especially, like you said, when they do swap out soundtracks. I was quite PO'd when they swapped out the soundtracks on Keen Eddie. Ugh. Uh, it was just oh, a brilliant yeah. show, and it sort of took away part of what made it so great. Really did. Uh, the other examples that came to mind were, did, did any of you ever see the remade version with the actual orchestral soundtrack of Legends. Oh, yeah. As opposed mm-hmm. to the Tangerine Dream. Yeah, it's actually uh, really quite good. Yeah. I've watched yeah. them both, and, you know, I, they're both really good yeah. for entirely different reasons. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, you talk about Lady Hawk and say that, you know, it wouldn't work any other way, and you're right. It would change how this, the, the movie is, but I think that, you know, I think it could have been better with a better soundtrack. Maybe. There were things about I that that drove me know. absolutely nuts. I don't know. I mean, maybe we could say the same about Dune for well, that matter. Well, I, I think yeah. I think the only problem with the things like Lady Hawk and Legend and Legend is, by the way, my favorite Tom Cruise movie ever, ever, um, oh. is that it dates it. Is the problem when you go with anything that's not yeah, orchestral, that's it it sticks it in a time slot, and so 10, 15, 20 years down the <laughs> you're road, like, wow, that was in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and I think you're absolutely right with Dune because there were so many times in Dune where that where Toto music was overpowering. <laughs> It was so but overpowering. Toto's true. so epic. It just fits, man. They're... Wow. Oh, I yes. Like Toto. I felt the rains on Arrakis. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. What, 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 what part of the book was that? Because I read that's one of the books I did read. Don't remember that part of the book. Yeah, well, you know. Hey, Slicers, it's Patrick in Portland. You know, it occurred to me if, uh, you know, if Tim's the guy we pick in case of a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. And Brian's the guy we're supposed to be, you know, we want on our side if, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when AI our robot poppers. overlords yeah. take over. Mm-hmm. I think I finally figured out what it is we need to do with Mike. Oh. Mike, if there's ever a whiskey rebellion, <laughs> I want to be on your side. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> Wow, they have you pegged, that's Spot for sure. Uh, pip, pip, cherry. Yeah, hey, watch. Yes. There you go. So we, we, we'd cremate Mike when he dies, but the fire would never go out. <laughs> that's right. Hello, Slicers. This is Michael in Cartersville. A couple weeks ago, y'all asked all the new listeners to call in. Y'all said how nice you would be. You'd be gentle. Oh. You'd be kind. Well, you believed us? You know what? <laughs> I've still got scars from that time you guys ripped me a new one. Mortal. Just because I liked the American version of Life on Mars. Oh, oh dear God. Yeah, it still hurts. Wow. Yeah, it but should. It yeah. should. I love the show. Man. Thank Talk you. Talk to you later. Thank you for being a fan. Yes. The American version still sucked. Yeah, That's right. Own that, dude. Own it. Damn. Oh. Dude, yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, Carterville, do let's, for you then. Carterville, that's where the first place yeah, is going to wipe off the map. Wow. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Greetings, Slicers. This is Hello. Frank from PA calling with a question. Mm-hmm. I am a uh, recently new listener, mm-hmm. about a year or so, okay. and I was wondering how exactly, specifically, did Farpoint Media come into existence. Oh, good lord. You guys wow, dear God. start out as the super merkin loving juggernaut that you are? <laughs> or did you have Whoa. modest, humble beginnings? <laughs> yeah, just a soul patch. In <laughs> a dark basement in your mother's house. Oh, well, no. Somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. Oh, it was no, no I'm not going there. <laughs> no, I, look no, at Mike, no. I look at Mike because 
I've heard the story many times. Uh, so I'm not. I'm not even going there. Uh, is it because we don't have time? Or, or guys, or or the, pool party. Pool party. Pool party. Oh. Pool party. Pool party. Or or if you come to the Far Fest, our, our winter yep. party as well. Mike would be glad to regale mm-hmm. you over either washers, barbecue, whiskey. And he'll tell you the story in ten year, all ten years worth. There you go. Um, yeah. And uh, and and actually, Wikipedia is a pretty good source. There's yeah. a, there's, there's a good some Wikipedia. information up there. It's not complete, but it's at least the important stuff. Yeah, for the most part. Hey, Slicers, Steve from Indiana. Last week's voicemail uh, had someone mention that they might want to get together, Slicers around the country, and gather. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's awesome. The show. Yeah, slice key party uh, together as a group. I <laughs> thought maybe it'd be a good idea if you can do this right around the time you did a cyber cafe or some other place with internet access and meet when you do the live video broadcast. Oh, that'd be a good oh, idea. Yeah. Maybe you could possibly do some sort of remote live audience in that manner. Mm, Just a thought. Really what do you do think? That per se. I mean, we always have live audience anyway, so yeah. people are watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do now, we still do we still have a chat room? We. Uh, we monitor or we, we, we do you summer sometimes is in there but uh we personally in the studio we don't have that we, we can't we have split so the attention hands. yeah yeah, yeah, now man. ADD boy m- might be able to do some of it, but not, not most of the time. Not while he's operating not the video, Not while he's though. doing the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when Tim's here, maybe, like... We need a bigger staff. That's really actually not a bad idea. Like, we need assistance. If, if yes. we had Tim and I doing something, we could probably make something work. We'd talk about that offline, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. but, um, I mean, Thursday Night Gathering is a good, good time. Awesome. I think it's a fantastic mm. idea, and there's a perfect place to do that. We do it already. It's called Second Life. Right. You go to Second Life. You go to the AstroCast bar. Uh, we are streamed in there live every time that we're every Thursday night yeah so. but, but I mean we're talking we're trying to encourage more face to face but yeah but yeah that's I mean human if you want virtual uh, that's what I'm saying yes. is you don't there need you to create a virtual there's already one there right yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, face to face meetups and and uh, little get together on a Thursday night, watch the live cast. We're Absolutely, kind of like, you know, Jay Michael Straczynski when he had like the B five watching parties, he was always asking for. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. We're, we're big time. Mm. I, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. No. It's only in your head. You know, really mm-hmm. wouldn't be a geek key t- party. I think you'd bring like a <laughs> I don't figurine. Know why you, gotta put that. T- you bring your lo- you, <laughs> action, you bring figure? action oh, figure. Action figure. And throw it in a yeah. bowl. Can I be Han Solo and Carbonite? There you go. Um, Did you get the ice cube tray? That's the problem had on is slice? too many no? of the same ones. Yeah, I know. Then you wouldn't know which one's yours. Yeah, it'd be hard. You have to paint one of the feet on the bottom with a color. It's kind of like when you sit there and go to the 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 airport and they have the baggage thing right, right? and everybody has you know it's not the same bag yeah you're yeah, right yeah, that's it yeah mm. i could be i could be han solo with an afro <laughs> hey guys this is craig from pa hey i'm not calling about game of thrones i'm calling about something else okay please god somebody stop the event i don't care oh, about yeah, the event. No, it's i don't want to know what the they're event gonna stop is. themselves please, yeah, stop well the event. too late already did yeah it's, uh, it's, uh, your wish is granted thank I, you i don't think it's gonna get renewed and unfortunately I, it had so again another show with lots potential. of potential <sighs> and it just got it, it boring would, it really honestly suffered the same dang thing that flash forward did yes it was just too, too slow. slow which i put largely down to the writing the characters yes. right and the predictability and the pacing I writing. put it down to writing without um, taking into account the commercial breaks. Yeah. That's what yeah. I put it down Really? I think that's a because good chunk of it. Because if you take the commercials out, even flash forward, when you... When it moves you, a lot faster. It went a lot better yeah. when you got rid of the commercials. It's commercials that was actually killing it. Because you got to write to the commercials. And a lot of shows don't do that. Hmm. But also the event, they really needed to kill more characters. They, they really, oh, absolutely. Really, they did. Rah, rah, they, you know, same thing flash forward. They just need to start whacking people. Well, that, I will say that was one of my biggest things I, about um, the event was the fact that they had 16 different things going on at one yeah. time. Mm. And it's and it's like, it oh, it's like it's like a it's like a daytime so like you can't keep it all straight. Threatened to ar- arrest or kill Simon eight billion times. He's still around. Know. You knew the president was not gonna die. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, like, I, really. And, and you know, and she'd always forgive Simon. You're like, really, yeah. really? How many times you gotta be betrayed? Yes. I wow. Yeah. It yeah. just it, 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 hot yeah. mess. It, it could have been okay. okay. Got another one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Um, I'm not ending on a good one. This is uh, but anyway, here we go. Mine. I draw the science. Mine, I draw the science. Mine, I draw the science. The weird science? Mm, no, nah, that would have been better. It's my science project. Oh yeah, that's a I pretty, don't know that's that a, one. That's actually a pretty good little movie, actually. Yeah. It is. It's not yeah. a bad little film. So, yeah. okay. all right, last one of those. Last, last one voicemails. Let's do it. 
Hey, Fleischers, it's Arkel. Oh, Arkel. So I was just kind of walking around downtown last week, and I saw you know, a bunch of people. They were walking around, waving American flags, mm-hmm. and chanting USA, USA. Yeah. And I, I heard something that sounded like 211 has been avenged. Does that mean they got Fox later? Uh, oh, wait, hold on a second. Um, I'm having something whispered in my ear here. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, well, that's good, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if we can only send SEAL Team 6 to go get Fox Leader. Oh, yeah. I don't, like I said, I think so, he's in a cell. They know where he's at. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so we started with Fox and ended with Fox. I just kind of had this symmetry this week. So. Poetic. There yeah. you go. Hey, you know the numbers, 206-350-RE. Uh, no, how about 206-350-RE? <laughs> wow, you don't know the numbers. Track. Holy crap. Uh, 339 if you would like to uh, leave a voicemail. You know what the voicemail is. I have too damn many voicemails. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for this week. Join us in Second Life, please. We yeah. don't pimp that enough. There is actually a really nice little group there. Um, also, you know, we're everywhere. Just yes. Facebook, the Twitters, wherever. Ubiquitous. The There's no escaping us. 